Hey, my name is Eric with Fleming Outdoors, and today we're going to begin a short video series on raising chickens. To start with, we'll begin by incubating the eggs, and then we'll move the chicks to a brooder, then after that we'll take them to their new home. I'm going to try to explain to you step by step everything you need to know and the equipment that you'll need to start your own backyard flock. First thing I would recommend doing is getting your incubator before ordering your eggs. This way, if anything goes wrong in the shipping of your incubator, then you do not have eggs waiting without an incubator to place them in. Fertile eggs generally will remain viable for about 10 days. After that, I would not recommend incubating them. You can get your eggs from a local farmer or a friend with chickens, or you can order them online. I order these eggs online from mypetchicken.com. These eggs are from the education pack they sell. The education pack contains a variety of layers. This pack has Easter Eggers, Plymouth Barred Rock, Americanas, and Morans. The great thing about MyPetChicken.com is they pack the eggs with a lot of cushions so they will not break. And also, if you look closely, they mark each egg so you can tell the difference between them. The incubator I've chosen to use is the Hovabator Model 1588 Genesis. This incubator is a favorite among our customers and it generally provides the best hatch rate. I've also decided to go with the automatic egg turner so you don't have to turn the eggs two to three times a day. The location of the incubator is important to a successful operation. A thermostatically controlled room temperature between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 degrees Fahrenheit with fresh air without drafts is ideal. Room temperatures from 55 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit are acceptable, but good temperature control in the incubator is obtained when the room temperature is held within a few degrees. This incubator's preset for proper incubating temperature for bird eggs requiring a temperature of about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. No temperature adjustment will be required. Because eggs, incubator, and water are cold, the incubator may be slowed to heat up at first, but will not overheat and damage the eggs. At this stage, some moisture may appear on the LCD window. The moisture will clear up as the temperature rises. If after completing one or two hatches, you feel it necessary to slightly change the temperature, hold either the up or down arrow on the thermostat for a few seconds, and the set temperature will start changing in that direction in tenths of a degree. Keep in mind that thermometers can be off or change over time and should not be relied upon initially. The quality of the hatch may be the best indicator of temperature settings after considering other factors that can affect the hatch. To switch the display between Fahrenheit and Celsius, hold both buttons down for about a second. If you decided to turn the eggs by hand and not use an automatic egg turner, then warm the eggs to room temperature 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit and place them on the wire floor. Let them lay in a natural manner, which is on their side, with a small end slightly down. Turn the eggs two to three times a day. With a pencil, mark an X on one side and an O on the opposite side of the egg. Turn all eggs so the X's appear face up. Next turning period, turn all eggs where the O appears face up. Alternate this routine each turning until three days before the eggs are due to hatch. If you're using the automatic egg turner, place it on the wire floor at the bottom of the incubator. The thermometer should be placed directly on top of the eggs. The turner motor uses metal gears for additional strength when turning heavy loads. These gears can emit noise during the normal operation. Three days before the eggs are to hatch, remove the eggs from the turner, lay them on their side on the wire floor in their natural unsupported position. Add water according to the instructions. Do not attempt to hatch eggs while the turner is in the incubator as the slow turning motor could crush the chicks. When the turner is removed for hatching, maintain temperature by placing the thermometer on top of the eggs. The turner operates very slowly. You should not expect to see movement upon installation. Proper operation is detected by noting rack angle every 20 minutes. The purpose of supplying moisture in the incubator is to prevent excessive drying of the natural moisture from within the eggs. The correct amount of humidity can be determined by the size of the air sac when candled or by weighing the egg to gauge percent of weight loss. Both methods require knowledge and experience for the first time operators usually don't have. The hovabator is designed for simplicity in this matter and it works well for most species. I've turned the incubator up to where you can see the water troughs. Each water trough is numbered 1 and 2. You'll see it at the very bottom of the incubator on the screen. Add water every few days to trough number one only. Usually twice a week is sufficient. The amount of moisture in the incubator is determined 
by the surface area of the water exposed to the air. Under high humidity conditions, and for some species of birds, less humidity is required. The humidity in the incubator can be reduced by covering parts of the water trough with aluminum foil and securing it with tape. Whenever there's doubts about the level of humidity in the incubator, less is usually better than more, except for the last two days. Two to three days before the hatch, stop turning the eggs and fill both troughs with number one and trough number two with water. Place top on the incubator and do not remove until hatch is complete. Remove dry chicks as soon as possible to a brooder that has food and water temperatures of about 95 degrees to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Chicks can survive up to 48 hours after the hatch without food or water, but feed and water them as soon as possible to avoid stress. Some cases may require moving chicks to a brooder to dry. After hatch, pull red vent plugs to help dry chicks if necessary. A red vent plug is located on the top of the incubator. This should be removed when the incubator is used at altitudes greater than 6,000 feet above sea level. The plug may also be removed during or after the hatch if water drops will appear on the window due to high humidity. This will help to dry the chicks in the incubator. If removing the plug does not reduce the humidity enough, it may be necessary to prop up the top slightly to facilitate drying. If so, be sure to maintain proper temperature. Alternately, the top may be removed quickly and moisture wipe from the incubator to aid drying. Replace the plug after chicks are removed. I have now placed the eggs in the incubator and we are ready to begin incubating these eggs. The next video will come back on day 18 when we remove the eggs from the turner and place them on the wire wrap. If you have any questions while incubating your eggs, please feel free to give us a call. We carry many different incubators and while the process of incubating eggs is the same, some of the incubators are a little different. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions. We appreciate you watching our video and we'll see you on day 18.